All right, welcome back to part two, where I'm going to actually kind of get in depth about how to actually make it track shit you wanted to track. Quickly though, I wanted to check on bar settings. If you look at bar settings, this is kind of how it's going to be set up when you look at it. And I love just to highlight like clean curves. I don't know why I like clean curves. And then here's the other thing: you can go to transparency settings. And alpha in combat is how much it's going to say when you're in combat, like how bright it's going to be. So let's just say 65. Alpha out of combat is what it's going to be when you're not in combat. I like having that pretty much zero, so all you see is that. Like you just see this, and then alpha out of combat and a target, you can put it like lower. So it's kind of like if I'm out of combat, yeah, I don't see much on my screen. If I target something, yeah, I see a little more. If I'm in combat, then it gets bright. And that's actually kind of, I don't know, it's a little too alpha. Wow, that's really bright. I mean, I don't know, you can set it whatever you want. Let's say 65. All right, to actually get into the gritty of tracking something, obviously this is going to kind of depend on what your class is, but generally there's the buff debuff watcher. I'm going to do create. Awesome. Where do you want it? Side? Well, I like my shit on the left, so side left. Offset 3, because health is offset 1, mana is offset 2. Well, the next line is offset 3. And what do I want to track? I'm going to track Immolate. Because that's just what I want to put there. So, Immolate. Um, you want to track the spelling. You can actually shift click in there if you wanted to. And then after you hit OK, the next thing you want to check is you need to track. You want to track the target. And it is a debuff. So tell to track a debuff. And the R to track, that's just the name. When it says bar name, that's just so you can find it here. R to track is actually what it's tracking. So make them the same just to make it easier on yourself. Emulate. Okay. Bar color. Um, just kind of go with what makes it work. I'll just make my kind of an orgeous color. Okay. So now when I cast emulate on this thing, I should get that bar right there. Now what you're going to notice is as you keep stacking more and more bars, this text are going to overlap and overlap. How you get rid of that is you go to mark or text settings. And the upper text setting is this. And it's always what you originally put. So I'm just going to backspace that out. Bam. Gone. And you'll see that now I'm always tra tracking emulate on that. Now if I can get that combat, I can pull it up again and go to Ice HUD. Alright, now let's just... That looks good for me. That's perfect. Create. Let's create a new one. Another ability I want to track is offset left again. Or, sorry, side left, offset 4. Now, we want to do um, corruption. That's not the one we want to keep up. C O R R U P T I O N. Control A. Copy. Unit to track target. Debuff. Or to track corruption. I'm just copying it in there. I want to make that. Um, I don't know, corruption kind of seems like a purplish buff in my mind, so let's make a purple. So purple over there corruption and if I can cast emulate again boom emulate corruption mm, get out of combat there's corruption I don't want that thing standing there the whole time so let's get rid of that hit okay and um, here's a cool thing with like Bane of Agony and Bane of um, Doom for instance you could set two in the same spot because only since only one Bane can be at a target at a time you could set it like, um, or let's, let's tell it to track Bane of Agony, for instance. So, um, you know, I just go up, create a new one, Bane of Agony. Oops, not Agony, is the text spell that right? I have no idea. Control A, copy, okay. You need to track, let's go left, offset, f where are we at now? One, two, three, four, we're at offset five. Now, Bane of Agony, we're still tracking the target. It is still a debuff on the target, obviously. And we're going to tell the track Bane of Agony. Let's make that, um, I don't know, reddish. Like, well, red. Red works for me. Why not? Now, Bane of Agony. This should pop up on an emulate. C should put up a corruption. Awesome, right? Now, here's a cool thing. Since you only have one Bane on one target at a time, 
I can actually get out of combat. Uh, just to clear it up, I don't really need where's Bane of Agony. I don't need Bane of Agony's upper text. I know what colors mean, so yeah. And if you're colorblind, I guess you could space these out differently. So let's create another one for um, where's Bane of Doom. There we go, Bane of Doom. Bane of Doom. I'm just going to copy it here so it makes it easier. We're going to try. Oh, we want it on the left. And we want it at a 5, right? The exact same spot Agony was at, because you can only have one at a time anyways. And we want it to track the target. And we want it to... it's a debuff on the target. There we go. So let's put Bane of... Oh, I didn't... hold on. I gotta get that combat. Come on, there we go. And color to make it. Bane of Doom. Um, I don't know, I guess black-ish. So if I push E's Bane of Agony, do we set that at red? I guess we just set that at red. Now what happens if I hit Bane of Doom? Bam. See? It goes black. Because you can only have one at a time, so you might as well have it in the same spot. It's my view at least. And I can change that Bane of Doom to, you know, not say anything. And the other thing you want to check is, um, only track orders by me. This is kind of a touchy thing because of abilities like Shadow and Flying. Now, with Shadow and Flying, that's the exact same debuff as a mage's critical mass that they, uh, a fire mage gets. And you can have it set to track both equally. Now, as a, as a warlock, you're not really going to care because you're going to be casting Shadow Bolt a lot, so you're automatically going to be refreshing it, refreshing it. As a mage, however, you might want to know when the warlock, because you might be get some shitty RNG as a mage and not get a Pyro Blast forever. And you just uncheck... Um, just uncheck only track orders by me. So like on your mage specific character, I actually have this on mine. I have it set to track critical mass, a target debuff critical mass. Cause like that way any fire mage that has the buff on, I can see it. And then I, you can actually duplicate this exact set. You can duplicate that bar and then just tell it instead of tracking critical mass, you can tell it to track shadow and flame, which is the warlock version. So that way that bar is always there and it doesn't just disappear and you don't know what happened to it. Now to track something like the Molten Core Effect, which is, um, where is that at in here? Here. You have a 6% chance to gain the Molten Core Effect when your deals damage. This is ugh, it's kind of annoying because, like I said, alright. This kind of goes in more with trinkets. I like doing this on trinkets. But, um, buff debuff stack counter. So we're going to go ahead and click that. We're going to click Create. And Molten Core. Isn't that what it's called? Right? Molten... Molten Core. Right? With the space. Control A, copy. Okay. You want to track player. It's a buff. Or to track Molten Core. Okay. Maximum application. What is it? Three? Alright, so the maximum application is three. Sounds good. Uh, color? Um, wait. Oh, sorry. Color, um, I don't know, Molten Core kind of sounds like a, like, I don't know, a tangerine -ish color, I don't know. And it procs from Emulate dealing damage. So let's just kind of throw Emulates around to get this thing to proc. Hopefully. That way you can actually move it. Oh, there's a good thing I can, okay, here we go, Molten Core, see? I kind of like where that's at, but I want to bring it up a little bit. Maybe. Font size. You see at three, right in the middle of those shadow crystals right there? I kind of like that. And I've actually been meaning to do this. I want to move those shadow shards down. What are they called? What the fuck were they called? I can't remember. Soul shards? Do 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 do. Shard counter. And they actually have this for um, Paladin's Holy Power, or if you see my rogue videos, my rogue combo points are there too. So I'm actually going to drop the shard counter um, vertical position. Wrong way. Let's drop them down there. And 
Okay, yeah, can we move around? Can we rewind? Cool. So what do we end up with? We end up with tracks, emulate, uh, Bane of Agony, corruption, and if Bane of Agony is up, hell, I can throw kind of Bane of Doom and it tracks Bane of Doom in black. Uh, if I can get it, a uh, emulation proc here. There we go, and um, now I got my Molten Core effect, so I now I have Molten Core right there at 3, so I'll cast one Incinerate, down a 2, cast another one, down a 1, cast another one, 2, it's gone. Oh, and I got another proc, because I've got like 10 going. <laughs> well shit, here, I can right click it off, and there, no more. And you can set that up with anything, like you can set the, the stack counter up, you can set that up with any trinkets. You can set the buff debuff off. It's just um, like on my rogue, for instance, when you want to track, like, uh, instead of tracking emulate on your target. Why is this not going? I'm stuck in combat. Oh, stupid spawn, that's why. Instead of, um, what are we at here? Emulate. Like, instead of tracking um, emulate, you want to track target, buffer, debuff, debuff, and then the aura, you can set this like on your rogue to track recuperate. You want to track yourself, player, debuff or buff, buff, and then, yeah. So I hope that answered a lot of the questions. Um, any more, just yeah, send me a PM and maybe I'll update this later. <laughs> Anyways, I do really like Ice Head a lot.